Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. I'm super excited about today's video. And this is just such an important topic that I'm just so excited to dive into. Um, it is such a simple yet profound truth that has honestly been transforming my life these past couple months. And um, it is just so amazing. It's just such an important aspect of our walk with God. And that's why I feel so strongly to make a video on this topic. So if you can't see from the title already, we are going to be talking about what the key is to having a fruitful life. I am here to talk about the love of God for you is the key that unlocks this amazing treasure in our lives. It's almost like I'm finding just this missing piece. It just feels like there was something malfunctioning in me, you know? Um, and I was like, I don't know, like something's off. And then like you get that one right part that fixes the piece of equipment and it makes it work. Like that is how important I am feeling about this specific subject of God's love. I'm only bringing this up because this has driven me to want to discover and know God's love in a deeper way than ever before. Um, so a couple years back, I don't like to say that I have it, but I was diagnosed with scrupulosity, which is a form of OCD, um, specifically religious. And it is something that makes you feel a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, um, and it's hard for you to understand and live in God's love when you are battling this. Um, and so like that was my number one heart's cry was like, God, I just want to know your love. I just want to feel your love. Like I just want to experience your love because your word says that that is your will for us to know your love. And so the past couple months, I've just been really taking God at his word and just being like, God, you said that you want me to know your love. So I'm asking God, and you said that when we ask anything according to your will, that you are going to give it to us. So I'm just standing in faith. I know you're going to reveal it to me. I know that you are going to grow this in me, Lord, because you do not contradict your word, Lord. And if you said something in your word, then you're going to do it. So I've just been feeling very confident about this area specifically lately, which is just grace from God to be able to be feeling this way. So in the book of Ephesians, we have Paul in chapter three, and the title of it is Paul's Prayer for Spiritual Growth. And this is what he prays for the church. So first he prays, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Notice how many times Paul is reverting this back to so that you will know God's love, so that you will be rooted in God's love, so that you will understand how much God loves you. Because there's a difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge. And so Paul is saying, I want you to know this in your heart, how deeply loved you are by God. Because when you understand that fully, like, watch out. And then it follows with my favorite verse, in the Bible, which is now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. So it is through this mighty 
power, this just, this love that he puts into our hearts. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that power is living in us. And when we can tap into that and understand who we have with us, God does such mighty things in our lives um, for his glory. Not talking about blessings and riches and all that stuff, but like just seeing the power of God in your life is a blessing. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to read that to you guys and just show you that it does say in the word that God does want us to be rooted and grounded in his love. This is a prayer that he literally had Paul write to pray over the church. So this is God's will. And it says, whatever you ask for according to God's will, it will be given to you. Um, and so I've just been really realizing and understanding how important it is to seek and seek and seek and knock and ask God for the revelation of his love for you because... Um, because he will give it to you and when you understand God's love everything changes I also want to bring up a verse in 1st John that says there's no fear in love but perfect love casts out all fear and then in the following verse it says for fear has to do with judgment so basically what it's saying is you are on god's side now god loves you god is not judging you like jesus took our judgment on the cross and i want to read romans 8 31 through 34. it says what shall we say about such wonderful things as these if god is for us who can ever be against us since he did not spare even his own son but gave him up for us all won't he also give us everything else who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Like, just let those verses sink in. There's also another verse that says, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And this was maybe two years back. This was something that I was praying about in that season as well was like, God, I just want to know your love. Like, I want to know your love. I want to understand it. Um, like as much as I can, like I just want to grasp it. And I just remember asking God, I was like, God, I don't have children. Um, so I don't physically know what it would feel like to give up my child to be crucified. For people that were turning the other way from me and weren't even accepting me or wanting my help. Like, like I get that is a huge sacrifice, but I don't know what it feels like to have that deep of a connection with you know your offspring your child like i don't really understand what that feels like um and so during that time i was teaching in the preteen room and i had connected with this young girl who is like my little sister that i never had um i just adore her i feel like i was just so like mama bear over her i was like no one better mess with my girl like like we just had such a special bond and connection. Um, and I truly just felt like she was my long lost little sister. Um, and we're still friends now, but yeah, she's, she's just so precious. Um, but so after I prayed that prayer, I was like, you know, saying, I don't understand what it feels like. And then he immediately brought her to my mind and I started crying. I was like, oh my gosh, that is so painful to even think about um but that is how much you loved me god like what what jesus went through is more than any human could ever go through just the way that he was beaten 
literally to a pulp like in front of in front of people cheering them on um when he didn't do anything wrong he had people mocking him literally pushed a crown of thorns into his head um they spit in his face they flogged him whipped him all the way up to the cross and then at the cross they put three big nails and he was hung up on a cross in front of all his family and his friends um, while he was still being mocked. And he was also not clothed. Like, I know that I'm painting a very vivid picture, but just imagine the heartache. But Jesus looked at the cross. He looked at the circumstance that he knew was facing him. He even prayed before, Father, if you're willing, let this cup pass from me. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And so he went to the cross and he looked, and he looked past the cross and he saw you and he said, you're worth it. God did not spare his son for our lives, but he gave him up. And so we need to earnestly pray that God would allow us to be able to understand with our hearts the depth of his love for us. Because since I've been getting this, this deeper understanding, this deeper revelation of God's love, my life has been totally changed. And I've just been like spending so much more time with God because of how much I know that he loves me and like just wanting to sit and bask in that love. And then inevitably when you spend time with God, you are going to bear fruit of the Holy Spirit. In John 15 chapter 4, Jesus says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am. So Jesus is saying, the only way that you are going to have a fruitful life to produce the fruits of the Spirit to just basically to let others see Jesus through you is by abiding in him. And we can and we can enter into this abiding state and just approaching the Lord with confidence and wanting to be in his presence and everything. Um, just accepting how loved we are by him. And trust me, I know that when you hear people say this, sometimes if you're not at that point mentally, it's like, okay, it's easier said than done. And I'm not saying that I'm like all the way there yet, but I know what it feels like. And I feel like God has just had so much grace and mercy on me because he has seen the hunger in my heart for his love and God gives us the desires of our heart when when we delight in him so if you feel like you were in a place where you're just like I don't understand God's love and like if I understood God's love like I just feel like my life would be so different like the way that I just lived and approached life and like um the way that I acted and like treated others, like I just feel like it would be so different. I just want to encourage you to keep seeking, keep knocking. The word says keep knocking and the door will be open to you. And so I just encourage you to keep asking God that you would know his love in your heart, not just head knowledge, but in your heart and just see what an amazing work he does in your life. So that is it for today's video. I hope that it encouraged you and inspired you. As always, I appreciate your guys' support. And if you did like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when I post new videos. As always, I hope that you have an amazing, blessed, beautiful day.